All right, hello, and welcome to Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. How's it going? All right, we're going to do another whip and chat here with the Battle Ahead by Lothar Dietrich. 60 centimeters by 45 centimeters, 47 colors, square drill, paint with diamonds. All right, how's it going? Hopefully uh, you're staying dry. It's raining here again. I think there's a major storm system coming through, or going to come through, but yeah. <laughs> ran a couple of errands, turned the wipers on, because it was seeming like it was starting to rain, and then it didn't. Now that I am home, it's raining. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Alright, uh, Z or Z is their next little uh, symbol here, so we'll see. Uh, I think it's 41. Hopefully your crafting and other hobbies are going well. Alright, 41. Yep. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Uh, 35. 40, 41. 37.99? Yep. Okay, cool. This is just background, basically, so, yeah, been on this section for a bit. <laughs> I only have the, have the chance to sit down and diamond paint all too much, so, easily distracted, I suppose, <laughs> recently. <laughs> I'm taking much. Okay. Alright, Z or Z, alright. Let's see. Okay, I'll start at the bottom here. It's easier. Okay. Okay, about there. Okay, cool. Just seeing where I should place drills. Yeah, just kind of where the boundary is for. Okay. This section. Just want to diamond paint too far out of bounds here. Okay, cool. Yeah, should be a fairly brief uh, color here. But yeah, we'll see. It's just kind of confetti. Yeah, so there's like this 24,000 piece jigsaw puzzle on Amazon. I saw an ad for it on Facebook or whatever. So yeah, I just click on the 24,000 piece puzzle. And then I look at the product description, <laughs> and uh, yeah, for assembly required it says no. And I'm like, it's a puzzle though. <laughs> so I took a picture, took a screenshot, and like posted it on Facebook. <laughs> I just kind of had a laugh. I'm like, it's a it's a puzzle. It's a hundred and something by like another. It's gigantic, of course, and it's like. Uh, it's a puzzle. There should be assembly required. My dad's like, uh, so it comes together? <laughs> it comes assembled? <laughs> I'm like, no, it shouldn't. <laughs> oh my gosh, who would have space for that? Like, holy kittens. Like, we're talking jigsaw puzzle here. Holy, I've never seen a 24,000 piece puzzle. Wow, my word. <laughs> Uh, yeah, somewhere like near the beginning of the whip and chat here, I'll post a picture of the canvas that, uh, post a picture of this canvas that I'm working on, by the way. Yeah. Is, uh, really don't have a sticker sheet f with this, so, yeah, I'll post a picture near the beginning there about where I'm introducing the canvas, maybe. Yeah, that's just what I'm doing, and post-production. <laughs>
just slapping a picture in for a few seconds. The beginning of each whip and chat for this canvas. So, as I uh, took a picture of the legend on the canvas and uh, just for reference to like print out or whatever, and uh, yeah, picture's not really good. But it didn't print out very good, so <laughs> yeah, I'll slap a picture in at the beginning here. <laughs> but hopefully you're doing well. Yeah, it's just a overcast kind of day. Bleh. Yeah, I grabbed a McFlurry from McDonald's and got half price off because I work there. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, give him the crew discount. He works here. It's like, all right. <laughs> yeah, it's just nice. Not like I'm just going to randomly splurge on McDonald's all the time. Probably not, but just every once in a while. Yeah, it's just nice to get half price on some. <laughs> for being an employee, that's kind of a nice perk. Just for a snack or something, just paying half price when I'm not working. And then free food while I'm working. So. Yeah. Now, it's just a perk of working there, I guess, but yeah, in moderation, of course, in my case, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to milk it for all it's worth, like, no. <laughs> not like that. <laughs> yeah, just don't be spending, like, $500, <laughs> buying $500 worth of food, okay? It's like, <laughs> that's what my supervisor told me, <laughs> just orientation to... Yeah, I'm like, yeah, of course not. I'm not going to just buy a whole bunch of food that I'm not going to be able to eat. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I usually just get like a coffee and like a... had a coffee and a Big Mac for a break the other day. Yeah. Yeah, just simple. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'm not going to go extravagant. I don't want to beating McDonald's all the time. It's only a half hour break too, so over fi five hours and more. It's just a half hour break at McDonald's. I'm fine with that for what you're doing. And it's like eight hours. It just feels like a breeze because you're always doing something. So yeah, eight hours just, just up to eight hours. Yeah, I'm per time, so I don't get an incredible amount of hours, but yeah, I'm not going to complain about what I get for hours. Nah, I'm fine. <laughs> I get what I get, so. It's, uh, there are full-time employees who's, that's their job. It's their full-time job, so. I'm just doing this on the side. <laughs> so, Yeah. If I get 11 or 12 hours, I'm happy, so I'll get here. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, I guess minimum wage is going up here in Canada in October. October 1st, it's going to 16 something. It's 15 right now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yet again, not going to argue what I'm getting paid or whatever. I knew that going in. Yeah, it's just extra income. <laughs> yeah, and you're probably like, why McDonald's? I worked at, at McDonald's 20 years ago when I was like a student. Like after school, I just worked a few hours after school, after high school or whatever. So, yeah, I've been in the food industry 
like working in the food industry for almost 20 years now so yeah I could probably say yeah 20 years I've been in the food industry working so that's basically my background so yeah McDonald's just was a natural fit I kind of missed it when I moved to St. Mary's here, so I was only there for a year, but had to move, so I had to quit my position at McDonald's. Yeah. Flash forward 20 years, and yeah, it feels very similar. Yeah, there are some differences, so oh, it's kind of nice. Yeah, you just pop in and you just start working. It it's so nice. Yeah, love it. Totally different pace too. You're on your feet, but you're always doing something. Yeah. Constantly busy. I like the movement feel to it. It's probably what I missed. <laughs> deeply interactive and involved but yeah my full-time job is the direct opposite just you interact with people every now and then but you're by yourself most of the time you have a radio on your waist but yeah you can it's kind of easy going <laughs> mcdonald's you're on your toes but i i like that because you're doing something with a purpose it has to be done within a certain amount of time it's like quick 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 <laughs> so yeah that's really cool glad to be back in it even though I'm like a just grill staff at the moment but no that's where they want me so that's where I am so I don't mind it <laughs> Yeah, you just get shown a couple things like how to operate stuff and then you just dive right in. It's really cool. <laughs> Basic safety stuff, yeah, you know, that kind of thing. I, I just sit there and listen to it. I have to do it like every year. Get Wemis and yeah, it's nothing wrong with that. It's like law that you have to get trained for that kind of stuff you have to have knowledge of workplace hazardous materials information statements or something <laughs> heard it so many times but then once I try to recall it, and it's just gone. Information sheets or something? Yeah. There's absolutely nothing wrong with working at McDonald's or, yeah. It's worldwide company. It's recognized around the world. It's really good on the resume. So when I was interviewing for the McDonald's and St. Mary's here, they saw that I had worked at in Stratford before. And it's like, oh, that's all I need to know. I'll look you up. So I guess they keep and play records for a number of years or something. Like who had worked there and. For how long it was just a year so i would have stayed there to tell you the truth but no we had the decision to move to st mary's so yeah i wasn't driving then so i didn't get my driver's license until later a few years later oh because i could just walk downtown like after school take the city bus and 
just walk the rest of the way. <laughs> Get a bus ride to that end of town and walk the rest of the way to work McDonald. So, yeah. I don't know, it's a friendly atmosphere too. So I kind of like that. I don't really talk to too many people. It's just friendly interaction. Like, yeah, people are approachable. So even though most of them are like students, I'm probably like one of the older people there. It's usually a young workforce in McDonald's generally for the most part. But yeah, uh, just friendly and civil. Uh, don't try to do anything too crazy or say anything too crazy. I kind of have to be careful in that sense because uh, they are younger people, so <laughs> are younger individuals. But yeah, just treat everybody with respect, kind of thing, as I always do anyway. But, yeah, mom's like, just be careful what you say and do. <laughs> These uh, are students, younger people, yeah. They'll react if, probably in unwanted ways if, uh, you say or do something that's, uh, <laughs> they don't like. <laughs> oh, I knew that as well, going in, it's like, I don't know, I just show up, do my stuff, learn whatever I can, because I'm not seasoned veteran there. I have a rough idea of how everything functions at McDonald's, but I don't know everything. I can learn from anybody. So just look and listen and learn what I can, ask questions for when I don't understand something, yeah, basically my policy right off the get-go kind of thing, hopefully I get a name tag and a baseball cap or something to wear, uh, part of the uniform, so I yeah, just want all the components on my uniform. I just have one work uniform, but after my shift, I just, after I get home, I just wash it, hang it up, and it's ready. <laughs> so, yeah, it's all good. It feels good to be back in uniform. It's nice. Not too bad looking either. Pretty sophisticated kind of workwear. It's comfortable. I wear an undershirt for my, under my shirt, as I do at PCI, so. I've always worn an undershirt, just wearing the uniform shirt. That just, ah, it, it's weird. Because <laughs> I usually leave a cup, couple uh, buttons undone at the top. Just so I'm not like choking <laughs> on the collar. <laughs> yeah, so having the undershirt, yeah, just makes it less suggestive. Showing less chest. <laughs> yeah. Just like the layered look, too. So. But yeah. I don't know, there's some sort of inspection or something by upper management this coming week, so it's like you better have hats and your blue shirt and your uniform on so make it look like this is what we do all the time in the restaurant. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Just make it look good for this day. <laughs> when the upper supervisors are here. It's kind of like a kind of an audit per se, but yeah, it's probably like a franchise thing, so 
just to see that stuff's being done as it has set standard compared to other McDonald's as well as other McDonald's. Yeah, it's a franchise thing. So, meaning, yeah, if you get a Big Mac, you want the exact same type of sandwich, like, say, if you go to a McDonald's in Toronto or London, Ontario, you'd want the Big Mac to look the same and taste the same. So, yeah, when you walk into a McDonald's or a franchise restaurant or Tim Hortons, you'd want, yeah, the coffee to taste like you've always tasted it, like you've always had it. And a Big Mac to taste oh, the way you've always had it. Yeah. Kind of what they're doing and just like health and safety kind of standards. Yeah, it's just like a quick check over, like a... Just kind of observing like how the restaurant's doing, that kind of thing. They probably do it all over the place. I think it's like the same owner for like a couple of rest a couple of the McDonald's in this area. Like Stratford, I think there's same owner for the ones in Stratford or something. Stratford, Ontario. Yeah, just that kind of thing. I think you'd have to buy the rights to run a McDonald's. Like you have to buy the franchise rights to run it or something, own it from the restaurant chain. I think that's how that works, franchising. Yeah. Yeah, so an owner like just follows the guidelines set out by the head honchos who like created the McDonald's concept kind of thing, yeah. And you're an owner, you just like make sure it runs the way it's intended to, that kind of thing. So that's all that's about. I'd rather have a uniform on. Like, yeah, if you're if you're working for a place like that, even like Tim Hortons, like you're the face of that place. So if you're like acting like a total idiot, it's gonna make the company look bad and just you're like a first impression. <laughs> you're what people see and kind of expect some form of decent service and presentation <laughs> for a, an establishment. <laughs> yeah, it's just easier to get given a uniform, wear it <laughs> properly and all that. So yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> Uniform at PCI, I was given it, so wear it. <laughs> Just co-workers see me with uh, at PCI, it, then it's co-workers and uh, customers, the general public at McDonald's. So it's just look presentable, look the part. <laughs> it, so much easier. <laughs> there are some people who just have like hoodies or wear coats or something if they're working in like drive through over whatever they have uniform wise. Not everybody has the McDonald's uniform completely, but first couple shifts before I got my actual uniform, like pants and stuff. I just wore a pair of black jeans and a black t-shirt. That worked. So, as long as it was like neutral. And then non-slip work, uh, work boots, I had to buy those. That was a definite requirement because they freak out if uh, you don't have anti-slip shoes on because the floors are greasy. Yeah, fry grease, and they just don't want somebody breaking their neck. Like, yeah, just don't want to be held liable. 
it's a safety, it's a personal protective equipment essentially. So yeah, that, familiar with that. I wear steel toe shoes at the factory, so steel toe boots at the factory, and they stay there. So, and when I'm going to work at McDonald's, I change before my shift, like change here at home, keep the uniform on until I get home again, and just wear the safety shoes to work, that kind of thing. They don't have storage lockers there. Well, they do, but you have to bring your own lock and just for the amount of time, limited amount of time that I'm there, just, yeah, just have a coat on and just be like dressed, like in the work uniform. Yeah, easier. There are washrooms and stuff in the back, like for the staff, but it's just, <laughs> it's just what it is, a washroom. Like you can change in there, of course, but yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> Very basic. It's like a crew break room where people can set their drinks and stuff. Yeah, where they where you can go for breaks and stuff, but it's very low key, nothing fancy. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, people like freaking out about uh, Tears of the Kingdom, but. Legend of Zelda, that, that is. They're freaking out, thinking that it's a, a direct copy of Breath of the Wild. It's a Nintendo Switch title. Yeah, people are, like, whining about it. <laughs> oh, this just looks like Breath of the Wild. Looks like DLC downloadable content. It's the follow-up to Breath of the Wild, and then Link can do a lot more. There's, like sky stuff now there's like sky island and uh he has to use different abilities to be able to get to those places yeah i watched the gameplay trailer from like the producer of the zelda series had to be translated like it was like a voiceover kind of translation but he introduced the game like a demo Showed a couple new concepts. Link's kind of power ups and Link's new powers or abilities. Yeah, we'll see abilities. Yeah, it's like ancient technology. I think that uh, Sheikah tablet is gone, as far as I know. I think it's still that Sheikah technology, but something happens to Link's arm. It's malice or something. I haven't even played f through Breath of the Wild fully to tell you the truth, so. But. Yeah, Link's abilities evolve. And he can do a lot more. Kind of makes it easier to travel the world, in a sense. Like, just people complained about certain elements of travel or whatever in the game, so. Tears of the Kingdom kind of expands on the open world concept, which was introduced in the Breath of the Wild. And yeah, they just kind of put a little bit more juice into it. So yeah, it looks really cool. I love Link. I love Legend of Zelda, but I'm just not totally ecstatic about it. <laughs> like, I've played ocarina of time for a bit then got confused those were to go after a while i haven't played through a zelda game fully this is where i'm trying to go here but anyway you've been watching atlas color with jeffrey morrison down below in the description i put my facebook profile name my atlas color facebook business page it's really just a website within facebook that i created that you can create and my instagram all three yeah i just kind of share section completion 
kind of progress photos, that kind of thing. Any updates about Echoes of Color here? Yeah. Don't post very much, very often. Yeah. So yeah, just that kind of stuff. And I post walking challenge websites. Uh, just the main websites, Conqueror and Pacer. I just mentioned reading on the treadmill every once in a while. Like, I'm reading Game of Thrones right now, for example. Read on the treadmill to get kilometers or steps. And I guess a certain amount of kilometers per day walk. A certain amount of, a certain distance every day. Just to get kilometers towards completing these virtual challenges. Which for Conquer is Lord of the Rings five part journey, virtual journey across Middle Earth. I'm on part four. At Aya Sauron getting there. Like the 200 something kilometers left until I get to Mordor. And I'm doing the Great Wall of China challenge long version with a friend of mine. Yeah, made a team. Yeah, doing that together. So I'm putting kilometers towards that. Uh, Pacer is the same thing. Just walk, it automatically pulls my distance. And that's trading route in China, Silk Road. So yeah, now I'm doing this uh, Canadian Cancer Society 80 kilometer challenge. And so I'll just walk it, pulls my distance. I'm almost done this across Canada. Challenge 200 and something kilometers left there, but yeah This I do on the side not I'm not partnered or sponsored in any part by Conqueror or Pacer or anybody so Just information for the main website pages, but anyway Take care with your crafting endeavors slash hobbies. Thank you for the support and watching if you're just hanging out And I'll see you next time Bye